Have you ever tried filtering beer? Well, I haven't, so let's try it out. I'm Dr. Hans, and this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. Let's filter some beer. Today, we're gonna try to filter beer for the first time. This is one of gonna be those awesome DIY videos where you saw a handsome guy building stuff with his hands, but everything has gone wrong today. Me not pressing record on the uh, field recorder and uh, losing stuff, so I have to go and replace it. And leakage, but the filter is done. Okay, so this is like a kind of normal house water filter with a five micron filter in it. So what I did was assemble this and uh, for you with a good eye see that this is gas couplings. I was out of beer couplings, so I used gas couplings. Gas couplings work on the beer side also, so it's quite all round. Cheers. This is the uh, orange coffee lager. It has like seven months on it now. Still have that little spice. You saw that in the I did not clean my fermenter in a year video. So it's it's not perfect, but it's totally fine. So filter beer. What have I done so far? As I said, I have assembled this and leak tested. I also run sand clean through the filter. You were supposed to see that, but didn't get an audio. But these two cakes has been uh, cleaned and totally scrubbed out from oxygen air. Me filling them up totally with Saniclean. And Saniclean is uh, a sanitizer like Star Sand. Sometimes I use Saniclean, sometimes I use Star Sand. Can do a separate video on that if someone interesting when and why I choose. Which and half of the sanitizer has gone through this. So leak test with that and uh, the the rest was pushed out with CO2. So only CO2 in here, only CO2 in here, only CO2 in here. This cake we're gonna filter the beer into, and the beer we're gonna filter into this is a Kölsch, trying to brew a Kölsch to all of the rules and all of the uh, yeah, guidelines, the, the German purity laws, the Reinheitsgebot, and the Kölsch rules. Of course, I can't brew it inside of Cologne, but I've been there, I uh, made a video on my trip there, I tried a lot of different Kölsch, but all of the other parts I can do, so, Making a traditional Kölsch means that I need to filter it. But we're also gonna rack some beer into this cake or transfer, seed transfer. So we can also do a video about filtered versus unfiltered. That's cool, I think. I don't know how much I will use this because I don't see the point really in filtering my beer. I'm doing this stuff guys so you don't have to, okay? And if you want to filter your beer, hopefully we will learn something today. I'm not gonna say this is the way to do it because this is the first time I'm doing it. I saw something very, very interesting though in uh, when I flushed this with Saniclean that the filter itself acts like a long straw or pipe, something like that. I was thinking that I would have to put a, like a dip tube inside of this. I don't need to do that at all. So the beer is in the fermentosaurus already, but this time the beer is in, ain't carbonated. So the beer ain't carbonated, but I used the carbonator, like what to say cap, the cap, the carbonated lid 
combination lead because this was for fermented under pressure to start with. In the end, I ended up with an uncarbonated beer, but still with no oxygen contact because it has been sealed under cold crashing. So I had to fill it up a few times a little with CO2 because the uh, inflation, you say that, of the, uh, the balloon imploding. Please comment down below, help me out guys. This is a learning experience also for me, learning English and learning how to do stupid stuff on YouTube. The recipe for this guys is already up on my Patreon page in the Dr. Hans recipe book and if you guys want me to continue to try stuff like this consider becoming a subscriber and uh, also consider becoming a patron so let's try to filter this beer I used quite long lines here so I think we could really filter or carbonated beer but I think you're asking for trouble and I don't want to do that for my first time of course you want to see me do that the, the little keg here was kindly donated to me from uh, beer quip also is a regulator I'll link to him down below let's add like 12 psi here or should we do 10 I don't think it really matters today because the beer ain't carbonated. But I don't want to rush it, so let's do 10. If we hook that up, this should also be at 10 psi. Now it's also at 10, and we need also to pressurize the fermentosaurus. Do the same, or a little bit more. So we can start with the same, putting some pressure on this one, 10 psi as well. Um, and you don't need really to do this from like the fermented source. You could move your beer over to the cake as normal and then have a second cake and filter from keg number one to keg number two. So think of the fermentosaurus today just like another keg. Also, we need a spanning bath. I choose the, the spandit with the thermometer. You don't need the thermometer really, but I like this setup as this ain't carbonated maybe we don't need a spawning valve we could just open the uh, the pressure release valve because this ain't carbonated but I have it so why not use it and it looks cool okay let's start it here so you can see it then I will put it somewhere else okay no beer is coming beer is coming can you see it Beer is coming. Beer is flowing down the wall here. It needs to pass through the filter to go into the keg. No beer is going into the keg right now. We have some pressure there. I'm gonna start releasing the pressure. I think we could go faster also. But of course, let's release the pressure here. So I'm looking here to see when it starts to bubble. Now, the plan is to, my, at least my plan is to do this very, very slow. So, can we put it in here with my tools? Yes, that setup is working. So you can see the, the bubbling down here and uh, can you see beers going in? Some CO2 bubbles in there, but it seems to be working. 
you can see the beer is very light in color and of course murky and here you have the beer in the fermentosaurus going very slowly here here you have a beautiful yeast down there I think I'm gonna reuse it no leakage and this is going like a charm I'm so worth it after this hassle this is the fourth time I pressed rec the filtering is almost done yes same beer going in there now hopefully rec is on everything yes so Not so much left, but still some. Of course, there's the beer in there also, but we can't use that today. If I was gonna filter everything, I have an idea for that. Oh! Okay, so this beer will get lost. If I were to wanna filter everything, we could just attach like an empty keg because I don't have a, a double male coupling I will build one someday and we could just push CO2 through this and get the last of the beer out but today we ain't doing that I could push the other way around this beer back into the ferment source but that would mean that all of the filter parts will maybe come with it or I could even push from the out in there but some of that beer would be filtered and the filtered versus non-filtered won't be as accurate so I'm losing beer for the experiment I'm doing these kind of things so you don't have to so please give this video a like subscribe smash the uh, notification bell and consider becoming a patron to help out because yeah this stuff costs both money and time but it's a passion the rest i'm going to transfer into this one and uh, this has been flushed with CO2, also this has been flushed with CO2, so nothing but CO2 in here. We really don't need a spandit valve, uh, sorry, a spanding valve, because uh, this ain't carbonated, so uh, we can just release the pressure this way. We don't need to counter pressure fill it. So I'm just going to fill this up, it don't need much, this is just for the... Uh, unfiltered versus filtered experiment. I think I got maybe like two liters at least. It's enough for the tasting video and it's enough for me to pull out the first beers. So we give it like an honest really taste. So we don't just have the first beer with the, all the drags settling down. I'm saving the yeast. If this beer is good I will reuse the yeast, just pitch another one on top of that yeast cake. Like I did for an entire year. If you haven't watched that video guys, you really should do that. Links down in the description. Okay, it's the next day. So let's try this. I did of course try it last night, but it was I was too tired to record any more videos. Since this is a Kölsch, we will of course pour it in Stange, the traditional Kölsch glass. Draw the, oof, that was carbonated as fuck. Okay, this might be overcarbed. Sorry about that still actually I haven't uh, have so much routine in 
carbonating the mini cakes. Okay, this will foam up. This is what happens when you overcarb a beer. So we will wait and let that settle so we can look at the result. Okay, let's pour the filtered one. Like I said, this is the traditional Kölsch glass, the Stange, which I bought in Cologne. But to me, this does not look like filtered beer. I honestly can't see any difference between the, the filtered and the non-filtered. I really like these uh, new new lights, I have two of them. They're dimmable. Like all the stuff I use, you can find at my Amazon storefront. Filtered versus unfiltered, of course this is overcarved. What did I do wrong? The filter is a five micron filter. Five micron. Should we have used a finer filter? Did I push the beer too fast? I didn't think I stressed the, the process, but something clearly happened. I don't know. I really thought that this should be crystal clear, but no. So back to the drawing board. Should I go through a 5 micron filter and then a finer filter or should I have gone in a much slower pace than I did? So the memory card got full also, so everything went wrong. And I also realized that my plan to do a Reinheitsgebot Kölsch actually was a failure when I decided to force carbonate it. So I decided to force carbonate it instead of carbonated natural in the fermenter source so I could filter it for this video and by adding the CO2. So here we have the two glasses of Kölsch and uh, the right one is the unfiltered one and the left one for me, sorry. This one is the unfiltered one. This one is the filtered one. And when I look at them, the filter one is a little bit clearer. I think you can see that also. Only slightly though. Some condensation there also. No, so if we wanna say this is a clear beer. This is a slightly hazy beer of that time. And uh, now this has lost some carbonation now. I, I, think if we compare it to this one but let's give it a try this is the filter one it's really gonna review the beer here uh, I have did some footage of this beer if you want to go into glass with you I can manage to squeeze that in. I'm taking on too many projects. Uh, okay, so the unfiltered one. Now this is interesting. Better mouthfeel on the unfiltered one. Much more complex, much more flavors while the filter one is, is crisp, clean, but uh, I'm sorry, I'm a bit confused. 
something else must be in play here also because it shouldn't be that massive difference but it is you tell me really nice kölsch has been lagering for a month the unfiltered one ain't bad but it ain't as crisp and refreshing as the filter one but I, I yeah I think something else is really in play here so guys I hope you enjoyed the video if you like this video consider becoming a subscriber like the video hit the bell also if you want consider becoming a Patreon, check out my website, sign up my mailing list and you will get my ebook for free. Three of my top recipes for you to try to brew at home. If you brew any of them, please let me know how they turned out. And also you can stop by my Amazon storefront for the stuff I used. I will try to put some links also down below from stuff used in this video. And of course, as promised, a link to Beerquip. So cheers guys and thanks for watching. Dog to out. Which one? Take the crisp one. Cheers. <laughs>